I have always had a connection with the paranormal. Growing up in an old country home that started off as a one-room cabin in the mid-19th century where multiple people have met a sad end, I became a believer. I'm your host, Drew Ellsworth McRae. I and my partner, Mark Siegel, are historical reenactors, living historians, and enthusiasts in the paranormal. We now investigate the haunted historic cemeteries of the Michiana area, chasing legend and myth, looking for that which can sometimes never be found. We travel around and research each of these individual places to know all we can before we start. We use the latest technology available to us from magnetic field scanners to voice recognition systems and spirit boxes. If there's a mystery there, if there's something paranormal happening, we'll find it. These are our living history's mysteries. All right, everybody, you're with uh, Drew and Mark. We're out here at the uh, Schulte Cemetery. Um, what can you tell them about uh, your preliminary um, investigation of the place? Well, it's pretty much out of the middle of nowhere. It's uh, the cemetery came from the Schulte family, also with the Wright family. Um, out of the information I've got was Back in the 80s, some of the people has done some witchcraft also out here because it's very remote, as you can see. Um, um, it, it is, it's actually very remote. Check this out. I mean, here is your uh, cemetery. There's the wives back there. They actually joined us for this investigation. Um, but if you uh, if you look back around, you can see all the green outside of the trees. Um, it's a good uh, probably two or three hundred yards back to the main road. And that's not even what you'd really call a main road. No, more so, like a dirt road. More like a dirt road. Yeah. So uh, let's check this place out. What was that? Henry Schult. He was the very first person to be buried in the Schult Cemetery. Hmm. Hence why it's called Schult Cemetery. Okay. As you can see, uh, much like a lot of the old... Uh, the old cemeteries that we investigate. This one here is in uh, no better condition. I believe this is probably our worst condition one we've ever seen. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think this is probably the worst condition we've seen yet. Entire row of family stones going clear back into the woods. Now here's something you very seldom ever see um, at a cemetery. Check check this out right here. This is awesome. These are actually old concrete pillars for a personalized plot that has been marked off. It looks like uh, looks like an entire area was marked off here for a certain family. Um, let's see if we can step back here and get them all. Um, you've got these that are coming off this direction. And you've got these other ones. There's a walkway right here 
going up to this family monument which has long since fallen into complete almost disintegration this is uh, this is fascinating mark was actually just informing me that several of uh, these stones are uh, pre civil war era Southrop. Okay, so then maybe that one, that one, that one, that one. Oh, connected. We are here at the uh, Isa grave now. What were you saying, Mark? Okay, Mark's investigating the bio on this one. We're going to check around these family uh, family graves right here around this main monument. Revolutionary War soldier. All right, hold on. We just found. Uh, Found what could be possibly the oldest grave here. Yeah, but I mean, so the Revolutionary War. And the Seven Years' War. So he was, uh, he survived, or he was alive during the French and Indian War. Henry Lybrook. Hmm. This farmhouse is going to be in this open field area right over here. Okay, and he's referring to the sketch uh, right here. Now you guys want to see something really, uh, really unusual. Uh, we just had a big wind uh, pop up. Everything is starting to move now. <laughs> I want you guys to look at this magnetic field. Now we're going to move back over this direction. And then we're going to walk. look at some more of this cemetery real quick. Okay, right now we're discussing um, Stephen Wright. Mm -hmm. Stephen Wright. We're looking at the grave of Stephen Wright. If you look, There's a quarter placed in the corner of the marker. Steph was just looking online. What does a quarter mean? A quarter means that you fought. You no. <laughs> you fought. You fought with him, and he died. And you were there with him. You were there with him. You yes. were there with him when he died. Hold on, let me read it right. By leaving a quarter at the grave, you are telling the family that you were with the soldier when he was killed. That's There's odd. one for a penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter. Yeah. Well, that's odd because I'm looking at his bio. Stephen Wright was a Quaker, and he had no enemies. He didn't even fight in any war, though. So that's what's interesting there. Hmm. My cousin has a... The other thing that's very interesting is he died in 1898. 
This is a 1993 quarter. So it would actually be impossible for anyone to have died with him to have left that 1993 quarter. That's almost the size of the last one. Talking. No, I just had Jess bring this thing over here and put it up against the corner by the Revolutionary War burial. You see where the numbers are at now. They're up midway 700s. The more we sit and talk about this grave and the baby who's interned here and the soldier who's interned here, the more the numbers like to fluctuate. Did you see that tree? Something that tells me we're going to have a very, very active earth? evening it's tonight. Like ginormously big round almost 800. Twisted. It's almost like an archway is what it looks like to me. Mary Heard, wife of John Lyrook, born February 9th, 1821, died January 26th, 1903. What's going up? Is that 82? 1885. Mary Heard. The closer we get to dark, the higher the numbers are getting. I'm killing this equipment for right now. We're going to wait till dark. We're going to have some fun. All right, Mark, go on and uh, say that again. Well, as I was doing my research on this uh, cemetery, one of the founding uh, people with the cemetery, uh, William Wright, he found uh, during the Black Hawk War uh, during Cass, in Cass County, they, he wanted a, uh, a militia regiment to uh, as an uprising. So a thousand people from Cass County came up and took arms, whatever they had, guns, rakes, whatever. And this person right here was one of uh, Wright's, what was it, a uh, lieutenant in a militia called the Cornstalk Militia. Now, as you can see on the other side of this open field area was their encampment right after the family farm was pretty much destroyed. At, the, at that time, so during that time, as they were training, two two uh, officers from the U.S. Army came out and tried to train the militia on maneuvers, tactics, and whatever they can do to try to um, upheld the Blackhawks during that time. Well, at during that uh, time of the training. It was no use. A lot of the people were country peop uh, countrymen, um, had a hard time with the ta tactics. Also, during the winter, the weather was uh, not to their advantage, working in mud, water, rain, snow. So the two soldiers that were training the militia pretty much gave up on them. The night before they left, they gave the militia like two barrels of uh, whiskey and told the guys have at it. During, uh, at that time of them drinking, they pretty much had an off work. Went into Cassopolis, Michigan, and just pretty much tore up the town. Had fun, got drunk, and a little bit of everything. After that, the Cornstalk Militia was pretty much dismantled. Hmm. Wow. And you even put that sketch where the farm was at as well. Now it's, look, now it's higher. You do do me. Come on. Come on. Come back over this way a little bit, like right in front of that. Yes, now it's not doing that. It's not even going low enough. No, but it's getting crazy again now. But it was like dropping down to the teens and then going up to 300, like in, like that. Look, look it, there it goes. Like crazy. There it goes, look, look. It was like dropping down so low and then like back up to two and three and 400 and... weird super weird but it won't drop low because you got to go more to the left is where it drops low at i don't but look how it, we're not we weren't yeah. even this high no not even close we're still in the 100s that is like wicked crazy mm. now it won't let's see if we went up a little bit i don't know 
But look at that number. I mean, look how it bounced. Mm -hmm. We're all over here checking out the Milligals with the girls. I was walking away. <coughs> this is that row of uh, family graves. If you look right back here. There's more of them all back through here. Very interesting. I've never seen someone buried that way before. All right, this place is going to get very spooky very fast. I'm trying to watch where I'm going here. I don't want to uh, inadvertently. You're looking at a cold chill right in this area. You have the thing. I'm getting a really cold chill. Hold on. Hey, girls. Right in this area. Hey, girls. Yes. Bring the Milligal tester right over here by him. He's getting a real cold chill right here. That's what we're looking for, y'all, are spikes like that. Look how spread apart the uh, the waves are. Green, clear at the bottom, blue in the center, red topped off. And it's still going. It's like they did this on purpose because look at where I'm And that's actually what I was saying when we uh, when I was walking by this way earlier is if you if you look I'm gonna spin this around real quick and give you guys a, a panoramic of everything here. This entire graveyard is one giant circle basically. Granted, it goes off this direction where the cars are parked. It's an oval, but if you look, there's a distinct green line in the grass going all the way back around, going on the hill, and coming back around that forms almost a perfect circle. Seriously. And it doesn't look like any trees were cut down either. There were no trees cut down here, Ashers. So the trees, some. She just read 794. Wait for me, she straight out said I smell something, so I put it up as a joke, and it just jumped almost to 800. Yeah, we have two things. So there's a small, perfect okay. patch of grass and a sweet, then really crappy smell. Mm. Like from sweet to really good. <laughs> it was dead. Go. Oh my God. It was dead. It was dead this whole time. Well, no, it was, was dead. He was the crappy down. smell. I know. Okay, hold on. Okay, so what does it smell like? It started off like a sweet smell, but I could like taste it in my throat, and it tasted like almost like an incense. No, a sweet, I, I don't know, like sugary, sweet, sweet, like a super, a super sweet flower. Well, I've been smelling almost a honeysuckle. Yeah, it's a, it's a very sweet flower, whatever it is, but then there's a back smell of like, I'm sorry. Like, no, you're okay. I say shit. Okay, yeah. There's like a back smell of something bad behind it. Move, move around behind her. <clears throat> There's a back smell of something behind it. Hmm. 
Mark smells it too. So over here we get the higher numbers. Mm-hmm. Right there. Go up above her head. When I pointed right at her face earlier, it gave me 800. There's something with that tree, I'm telling you. I don't like that tree at all. There's something with you. I got cold chills. Oh, now you're reading even down here. You're reading. <laughs> cold on my left arm. See, look, she walked away and it just dropped. Down to. Mark, get away from that. 450s, 440s, 430s, 420s. She walked oh, away, she numbers started started dropping. Yeah. No. I don't even stop looking over there. Yeah, just, just keep don't. looking over Told there. Told you. It's going to be real out. interesting. So Do you smell it? Everybody's talking about this distinct smell. A lot of times you will get almost a sweet, um, almost herbal aroma off of... Uh, well, believe you me, there's absolutely nothing sweet about the smell of human decay. No. Yeah, that's what I'm smelling because I smelled it before in Gettysburg. Human decay? Human, human decay. Well, that's you know what, what I... they used to do? They would put herbs with human decay and try to, it, to, to like get rid of the scent. Oh. I've, I've smelled this before really several times. Right right move, it, move it towards the monument, Ash. It's, then it's starting oh, it's to... it's coming from this area. Move it over towards that big monument. Now go up the height of the monument. Oh, what? Why is it big? It smells disgusting. Well, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh peppermint. I know, and I jumped off. All right, I'm going to put this stuff back over on the hood of the car. It is almost dark, as you can see. We're getting very, very close to prime time. Um, I'm going to go grab the um, ovalus, and I'm going to see what we can find with that, uh, if we find anything, we'll uh, we'll come back on here. Who are you? Okay, you guys aren't gonna believe this. We are working with the new Perilous uh, word recognition system. Uh, so far, we have got uh, new K N E W action and tent V and V uh, the letter V. Uh, we have it set up here on the uh, on the Revolutionary War until. until until what? All right, let's step back just a little ways from it, guys, and give them a chance to breathe. <laughs> Addison. 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 Who's Addison? There was a name over here I couldn't figure out. Um, that is this little girl right here. Hold on. Um, yeah, Arminda. Arminda, okay, so it's not Addison. Leather. 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 Yes, my, ve my vest is leather, yes. Can you tell us some more? Affair. Affair? Is that who you had it with? Was this Addison? Someone knew Addison had an affair? The twisty tree. The twisty tree, babe. Used. Used. Ask, ask about the twisty tree. 
What can you tell us about the twisty tree on the north end of the uh, graveyard? Haste. Haste? What haste? What made the uh, the tree twisty? Who is that? Connor. Connor. Who's Connor? Hey Jess, can you go get the uh, little, uh, the little uh, voice box? Granddad. Granddad. Connor was your granddad. Ask if Connor was a good man. Was Connor a good man? Ask was your granddad a good man? Was Granddad a good man? Ran. Ran. Did something bad happen at the curly tree? Paralysis. Paralysis. Yep, it twists like a paraplegic, somebody that's riddled up with a disease. How did it happen to the tree? Did someone do that to that poor tree? Is someone still at the tree? Is someone still at the curly tree? The poor tree with paralysis. Don. They're Don. Don. It happened at dawn. Tree, 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 tree. <laughs> Ask if someone got hurt at the, at the tree. Did somebody get hurt at the curly tree? There's at least two men and three women talking on that right now. And then somebody's laughing. Ask one more time if somebody got hurt at the tree. Did somebody get hurt at the tree? Throw. Throw. Did a bad person hurt the tree? Benjamin. Benjamin.
is Benjamin here? V again. V again. Can you see my daughter in the orange sweater? Her name. A lot of names going, going on out here. Benjamin Connor, Don possibly a name, Harriet. No, Don was lowercase. So is Harriet. So is Benjamin. So is Addison. Oh, that's true. Okay, you were just pulling Mark towards the curly tree. Why? You stopped. Yes, he stopped. He does not want to go to the curly tree. Don't go over by that no, tree. No, I do. No, I mean don't go over by that tree. I'm He's being it. drawn to the curly tree. Why? Settlement. There was a settlement close by here. The farm. We know of the farm west of here. Come down. And there was a small camp here too. You guys remember we yeah, heard the, the militia. Right. Why are you wanting to pull Mark towards the tree? I know you can answer me. You've been doing it. Exactly. Yeah, the activity started and the wind completely stopped. Help. How can we help you? How can we help you? Are you going to talk to me? One. Do you have anything else to say? Malevolent. Malevolent. It sure did. Scanning stopped. What? what Scanning stopped. Yeah, no. 
Mister, stay behind me, please. Stay behind me. Please. I'm right here. Watch as he's sliding on those slides directly past Stephanie's head right before she turns and looks at it. No, nope. the last key word was malevolent. So do not go over there. Nope, come on, we're, we're out. We're, we're done. We do not want this one up, this malevolent. Besides that, it's 10.03. You said you guys had to leave at 10. Well, that's a good thing. Right. Oh, it just it, it wants me to keep going. I don't know why. I have... What do you think? I think there's some uh, squirrel I think. Another success? Another success. Another success. <laughs> All right, guys. You seen it. You heard it. It was right there on the perilous. Something's drawing Mark to that tree. We're not oh, taking any chances. Now. It's last key word to it was to us was malevolent. No, I ain't taking no chances with my friends. I ain't doing it. So this concludes it, guys. It keeps on telling me to go back. Yeah, and you're not no. going to. Let's go to the car. Right over your car. car. Now. All right. We're out of here. Deuces, y'all. Much love, and uh, we'll see you later.